what you call behavioral models. But when you talk about now the dynamic model, we are supposed to look at what you call the sequence diagrams and collaboration diagrams. So today we can cover those two, but before we cover those two, uh, we can maybe uh, do some uh, questions, or maybe we can do a question on uh, activity diagram that we are supposed to draw and the use case that we are supposed to draw uh, in our quiz. So I think, Matthew, I have uh, seen your... Okay, I extended, but now I had not closed the quiz. So I don't know what was the issue. Uh, but I hope maybe after we do this, uh, maybe if I give you another one, we'll be able to do it because I will not have a limit time that you can do that quiz. So let us please, first of all, go back to a quiz. And I think I will still use the same quiz that I had given you. Uh, maybe I can uh, click share so that we can uh, share the screen and share the screen. And I want to go directly to the quiz that we were supposed to do. And this is the quiz that we were supposed to do. So the first thing that uh, we said we need to have uh, is, uh, okay, there is another student who has ended. Eh? Uh, this student is doing currently. You're not supposed to do right now. I'm supposed to do it. Or can I leave it? Maybe you complete on that question, eh? Uh, because I can see Rich and you are doing it currently. So I think you can complete this qu uh, quiz, eh? And then maybe next week we can revise it. Is that okay? Can I first of all leave it for you to do it first? Then after that, we revisit it again on uh, next week on Tuesday. So that now we can flash back from uh, activity diagram, uh, use case, collaboration diagram, and then the one that we will look at, what we call the sequential diagram. So let me leave it first because I have not uh, indicated the adding time. So it can be done. Uh, up to now, it can still be done. So you can do it. Is that okay? Okay, some of you have said it's okay. Uh, okay, so I think we can proceed. Eh? And uh, uh, before we proceed, eh, is there any question on use case and activity diagram? Because if you look at the use case, there are some diagrams that you need eh, to use or you need you require to use. Remember, if I can give you the presentation for that. Uh, maybe we can have a presentation. Uh, just a minute, just a minute. So uh, allow me to you maybe to have a presentation. And uh, when you are now presenting uh, the use case, when you're presenting the use case, allow me to use paint. Uh, maybe I can use paint to define that. So there are some diagrams that we said we need to use. One, when you're using the use case, there are symbols. And uh, one of the symbols we said is what you call the actor. And I know you can remember that actor. And we say it, always make sure that the name is uh, at the bottom. So you should always include your name here. Don't, never include your name here or here or at the top. But uh, this one is wrong. Uh, this one is wrong. This one is wrong. But this one is OK. So you present like that. So this means it is an actor. It is an actor. Then after that, we said we need to use a use case, and we said we can present a use case, something like a, a novel. We represent use case like that, but uh, the use case name should be inside. 
So you need to use a use case inside it. So there is a name that you are supposed to have within that. So it is supposed to be presented like that. Maybe this is now with the draw. Maybe we can have what you call with the draw. Then after that, we said we use a flow. And uh, this is when we need to have a flow uh, from the use case to another use case. Then we have the flow. Uh, maybe from uh, the use case to an actor. So you can use this. We still say that we can have some relations. And this relation we said, we use a dot and line. So when you understand that, uh, those are the things that we require within a use case. Now it becomes easier for you to do that. Then we said we use a boundary. At the moment you are using a boundary, we enclose a boundary inside and outside. So we have an inside activity and we have an outside act uh, we have an inside sorry and uh, we have what you call an outside activity so that is how we are supposed to present our data in uh, uh, this kind of our own presentation when you're using uh, what you call the use case so make sure that you have all the relevant data and uh, when you have these relevant uh, symbols automatically we can be able now uh, to move from one state to another. So we say uh, these are the processes. We move a process to another. And uh, I remember there is another case that we said, suppose we want to have a, a new actor. Maybe we have an actor A here, and uh, we have an actor, actor B here. So if this actor, the one that is here, depends from this actor, we said we use a straight line we use a straight line meaning this is a given relation and this relation says that this actor is supposed to distribute some this actor is supposed to di distribute some characteristic to this actor b so it's like now we are talking about maybe uh maybe uh, a customer or maybe uh, yes you can have a customer and maybe here we can have a, a student. So you can be a student and still you are a customer in a certain school or in a certain organization. So it means that this person who is a student uh, has some attributes that are coming from a student. So you present that. So the moment you present this, eh, there is no need eh, of saying that eh, we have this eh, who is doing a certain application here or who is doing a given application here and this does the same. So when you present this person uh, who is a customer and uh, is giving some uh, processes here, so automatically it means the same way. So this person is still giving. So you can only present with this arrow. There is no need of presenting another arrow to that because now this has already been joined together to form one presentation of a process which is here. Then after that, we said we have activity diagram. And uh, when you are using the activity diagram, we said one of them that we, are need, we need to have is what you call the start. And we said we use a dotted circle. We have a dotted circle. So this circle is dotted. And uh, after this circle is dotted, so automatically now it moves to a certain process. So that is why we said we can now have an activity. And when you are using an activity, we said we use a rectangle, but it is curved on both ends, on those four corners, vertices or vertex. So this is curved and this is curved. So I have seen uh, to the question that most of the, most of you uh, who attempted the question, they were using a straight lines, which is not curved at the end. So when you are presenting something that is not curved, now, that one is uh, wrong. So we cannot present like this, but we need to present it as a curved, uh, being curved. Then after that, we said, so this is an activity. This is the start. So you can use this as a start. Then we said uh, we can use stop. A small circle, uh, I think that is not a good circle. So we have a small circle and then after that, it is dotted at inside. Then we have that arrow. So it means this is a stop. We are stopping something. 
Then we're still saying that we can have decision. Uh, we can still have decision. Just a minute, I take this call, uh, which is urgent, please, uh, around me. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry for that. I'm sorry for that, my friends. And uh, what I was saying, eh, uh, you need to present a decision and uh, allow me to use this diagram. I think you can see them, uh, the way they have been presented. So if you can't clearly see them, I think you need to tell me of which now you know the symbol of organization, meaning that you have alternatives. How many alternatives do you have? One, two, three, four. So you have four alternatives. But in our case, eh, when you're using a flowchart, because we said an activity diagram can uh, be as a resultant of uh, when you're using a flowchart. So it is the same way when you're using a flowchart. So this decision, one of them is yes, maybe the next one can be a no. So when you have multiple presentation of decisions. Then after this case, eh, uh, what we need to understand within this, eh, we said we can use what you call synchronization bar we can use what you call joints and uh, that's why we said if you have one activity and then we need to resort to many other activities eh, you can be able to present that as a join so meaning uh, one activity is resulting to multiple uh, events like now when i'm cooking tea maybe i can uh, cook uh, maybe i say here uh maybe uh, i pour maybe i pour in flask or on flask so then after that this is serve maybe we can serve uh maybe you can drink maybe you can do that so those are the things that are done at the same time so if this uh, this one can be done at the same time with this eh? and this one can be done at the same time that's why we present them like that but we can still alternate these eh? where well, we are having many uh, uh, presentation of activities. So we have many activities, but these activities that we are having, they are able to resort to only one activity. So when they are able to resort to one activity, now we are able now to say that these activities are combined together to form one activity, which is uh, given as a, a resultant of these three activities that we are having. And that's why if you look at now what we said about this, eh, uh, we said eh, uh, in activity diagram, we always follow these symbols. And I think these are the symbols that we have already talked about. Uh, one of them we have talked about is a fork. The other one we have talked about is a join. Then we have this start and we have stop. We have flow, we have activity, we have decisions. So today, uh, uh, before we move to that, uh, that's why we said eh, most of these activity or these transitions that we have, they must flow from one point to another. So it's like we are saying, if activity A is formed, eh, activity B has to be formed. If activity B is formed, so activity C has to be formed. So you cannot form activity D if activity A, B, C has not been formed. That is one of the disadvantages that we say we have within the activity diagram. Because when you look at the activity diagram, we must make sure that all the activities are okay or they are done at the time that they are supposed to be done and they are very efficient. And in that case, that's why we need to have an efficient system when you're using an activity diagram. It is not like when you're using a use case where we say it, when you're using the use case, there is no need of following uh, a procedure and i think one of you asked uh, what is the meaning of that procedure if you look at the use case and i explain that where well, we said most of these activity one can follow the other and the other one can maybe uh, be the second one so it's not a must that the first activity will be the second one so the first one can be the last one the second one can be the first one so in that case eh, now you form what you call uh, the use case diagram now, I, I want to maybe to work with what you call the dynamic or dynamism of this activity. Remember, at that point, we are talking about the behavior. What can we do? Uh, the activity that has to be done at that time. But now when you talk about dynamism, we are looking at now a point that changes to bring another change. 
So if one point, uh, if one activity changes, it brings another activity. So if that fails to complete, automatically you never have a complete system. Even though we are looking at activity diagrams where we are saying activity one must be completed, we can end at that time and we continue with other activities. But for this activity, for this uh, uh, diagram that we talk about, the dynamic diagrams, automatically we must make sure that these activities are able to form a complete session of uh, the representations. And within this, uh, in most cases, we use what you call the sequence diagram. So make sure that you understand uh, those categories. We talked about static, we have talked about behavioral, and now we are talking about the dynamic modeling. In static, we talked about classes. That is what we, are, uh, we, we discussed, classes. Uh, in, in behavioral diagram, now we, are, we talked about the, uh, the activity diagrams and the use case diagram. But in this dynamic model, we have to talk about the sequence diagram and what you call the collaboration. We talk about the collaboration. All of these diagrams are referred to as interaction diagrams. They are called interaction diagrams because we interact with them. They change. And maybe in the morning, you are very cold, but now you are very hot. So that is changing with the environment. So we are looking at some things that are changing in the environment. Now, if you come up with your own system, maybe you are coming up with a system for building, uh, uh, maybe for library management system. Uh, where is the dynamism within that? Today, we have registered 20 students. And these 20 students, they have visited the library today. But if you go tomorrow, you find that those 20 students, 19 of them are visited. Then after five years, you find that the 19 students that you registered, none of them has gone to that library. Why are we having that change? So we need to structure that. It is because of time. And one, it can be a cause of uh, the environment. Maybe the library, we don't have books. Maybe when you go to that library, it, there is no conducive environment. Then when you go to that library, maybe the librarian is very rude, maybe uh, he doesn't or she doesn't uh, welcome all those students who are coming to that library. So we are looking at now, we are changing with the time. And when you change with the time, sometimes you find that now we can look an aspect of uh, saying that we have dynamism. So in this sequence diagram and collaboration diagram, our main aim is to work with what you call time duration. And that's why if you look at this, eh, we can say the dynamic model is a UML model that shows a system in a change mode. So change mode, or it's dynamism. It means that the system is not static. And uh, if you look at the word static, it means it's not changing. Like now if you use a use case, I'm uh, talking about the use case for uh, a shape, like a triangle, that will never change. Even if uh, now we have about 20 decades, eh, it will never change. Even our generation, our generation to come, it will still be looking at now, the area of a triangle is this, the area of a circle is this. So in that aspect, that's why we are saying eh, there are some things that will never change within that. But now in dynamism, there will change. Maybe today you are looking at now the library, the digital library. Here we are looking at the, uh, the manual way of running. Then we look at dynamic. Now, there was a time that you are supposed to be in class. Now we are using what you call the e-learning platform. Now we can say we are using the e-books. So in this case, we are looking at dynamism. So that's why we need to understand the first diagram that we need to have, uh, or the first thing that we need to look at now in the interaction diagrams is what you call uh, uh, the sequence diagram. And the sequence diagram, uh, sorry. In the sequence diagram, we are looking at now the change of time, sending a message from one point to another. So in this case, eh, maybe allow me to interpret this eh, uh, uh, using a paint uh, at this time. So we require the flow. We require the flow from one point to another. And this one, we can call it a flow. So you'll allow me to write uh, in that so you understand how I'm writing it. Then from that point, you can say we have what you call eh, uh, the focus. So we have the focus. Sometimes we call it the focus of control. We call it the focus of control. 
and uh, I'm sorry. So focus of control. And when you're using the focus of control, we use a stream triangle. A rectangle, sorry, rectangle, sorry, rectangle. We use a stream rectangle, a very stream one. It's like a square that has been compressed completely, but it's very small. So this means uh, this is a focus of control from one point to another. Then in this case, eh, we still need to, to have what you call actors. Uh, and I want to call with one name, I call them objects. I call them objects. So uh, now, when are we supposed to differentiate whether it is an object or that? Like now, if I'm having a building, I cannot draw a diagram of a person. So for an actor, we can use the symbolic, but when it is an object, we can use maybe a building. Allow me to use B-U-L-D or B-U-I-L-D, and then you underline that, then it must have two full colons. So you must use two full colons. So what I'm saying is that, this is an object, so this is an OBJ. But this becomes an actor. So the moment you are presenting this, uh, you use a full colon, two full colon, uh, the full colon, then you say this is a person. So this is a person, and you can still underline that. So remember, we will be talking about a certain object, and this object that we are having uh has is called a, a, a build so we cannot use a, a real presentation of an actor or we cannot have a real presentation of this actor given that uh the building is not a person so that is now one thing that we should be able to note within this object so when this object are now communicating when this one is communicating with the building let me use that word eh? we do what you call messaging. So allow me to use a PowerPoint, uh, maybe to explain that. I'll be mixing with the different platform of editors. Please, you are around me that, uh, because you need to understand what I'm talking about. So for this case, eh, uh, what we have said, eh, we need to use a flow. Then we need to use an actor, and uh, we have said we can use objects. Then we need to use what you call focus of control, focus control, control of focus. Control of focus, or maybe you can use focus of control, it can work still. And uh, then, uh, okay, we have the flow, we have the actors, and then we have the lifetime. We have the lifetime. And when you talk about the lifetime, we are talking about the lifetime as an end of communication. As an end of communication. That is now the lifetime. So it has reached to the end. We cannot move uh, uh, again. That becomes the end of our presentation. And when you use this, eh, we always use a small circle. We use a small circle, a very small one, uh, which is supposed to be dotted. So we use a small circle, which is dotted. If you look at what we have said about this, eh, we are using the focus of control like this. Maybe it is an actor. We are using an actor as a person. And we must use a full colon. Then if it is a building, we use it as an object. Then it must have a control. Now, for you to separate them from an actor to a focus of control, because we can say we are having a person here, then this person, we must separate it with a, a certain activity here. So this activity, you separate it with a dotted line. We separate it with a dotted line, meaning the person who is here has already communicated some activity here. So we look at that in a scenario so that we can understand that scenario. Then from this 
person uh, from this focus of control to the next focus of control which here we have said we have an object here and we have called a person then here we have said we have another object and uh, we have called it a certain name then remember that this object has to communicate with a person so if this object is communicating with another person here now this flow from here to here this is a flow the whole of this is called a message so this is called a message so we are having a message from an actor to an object and when you are indicating these messages you must indicate it as one this is message one then we separate it with a full colon so what i'm saying is that if you have a flow and uh, this flow that we are having here uh we need to communicate with that flow so what we do we use a full colon so remember here we had said it is one then we say uh the first message is borrowing borrowing books the first message is borrowing books so what we are saying we can still have another arrow that is moving from this to this meaning these two activities are done at the same time but if these activities are not done at the same time but it is immediately you complete the first one immediately you complete this so if it is immediately when it is immediately you complete that what we can do we extend this symbol and then we say this one can move back to this then we can draw another focus of control and we must make sure that these focus of control are within the same level they are within the same level with this so you can see this is the same level you can see this was in the same level but because now it completed this and it returned back to the actor now this one we call number two then we can have a message we can have a message so what is a message a message is the information or the data that you are supposed to send from one object to another or from an actor to an object in that communication so we will be able to understand this eh, when you are using eh, a scenario suppose this is now the end of our communication that's why we are saying we can end this and we call it the end of lifespan and when you are ending this we end with a dotted line the same way because from one communication from uh, object to a focus of control we use a dotted line with uh, without uh, an arrow then from that we can maybe end that so that is one way that we can be able to understand about that communication and uh, when you understand that you'll be able now to use some different scenarios so that's why we are saying this is an interaction diagram that put emphasis on time ordering so the q and a is time ordering of a message that are passed between objects involved in a given scenario so in this case we have already presented something like this remember we are using this object and uh, there was something that i have already i had already forgotten so when you're using an object already always enclose it the object should be inside so you can see that this this object is inside uh, a rectangle so we have a rectangle then inside it we use this uh, object or you name the object so from this object we are having the focus of control from this focus of control we are having a message then from a message one we are having another message and these messages are communicating with another message or with another focus of control so at the end we can end this flow that means this is where the object ended this is where it ended here we, we don't have an arrow because it did not end at this point because we are moving at this point maybe it ended at this point so you look at the scenario that we are that's why we are calling the object lifetime we are calling it the object lifetime 
So if you can understand there is a uh, diagram or how they are supposed to communicate from one object to another, so it will become easier for you to now try to interpret on how we can be able to use them in our own scenarios that will be coming up with. So we will start with a very simple scenario. I know that you are doing a project and those projects that you are doing, uh, we can come up with your own use case. So I, I am uh, assuring you that the moment you're coming up with your system, I will be maybe expecting whoever now will be guiding you through the project, you'll be expecting or she'll be expecting you to have a use case, uh, mostly when you talk about uh, the logical design in our system. So if you look at the explanation, emphasis on time ordering or message between object, uh, X axis contains the interacting object, and these are the X axis, uh, the interacting objects. So this is the X axis, which are horizontal. Uh, then a vertical descending dashes line starting from objects representation to an object lifeline. And that is now this dotted line where we are having from the focus to this or from an object to a focus uh, within that communication uh, where X axis contain the messages. So we can see these uh, Y, these are the messages that are moving towards uh, the right direction or the left direction. So we can use that as a message in communication. And within that, that's why we need to do this question. And uh, I think first of all, we can maybe interpret this question that we have here. Uh, so that we can first of all understand the question, then after that we can move uh, to the next scenario that we have. The process of borrowing a book. So I, I think I'm clear. Before I continue to a question, uh, maybe we are clear. Are we okay? Are we understanding? Okay, so uh, maybe we can have two or three or four students saying that uh, maybe uh, they have some issues or maybe we can continue. So can we continue? Are we okay? Uh, Anne, Anne Kavinya, uh, are you okay? Doreen? Evans? Grace? Magara? Okay, so I think we can continue. We can continue. And uh, I want us to start with the diagram that we have here, uh, the scenario, sorry, the scenario that we have here. We try to interpret it, then after that we can come up with our own presentation. Where the first thing that we are supposed to identify is the message, and the next thing is the object that you are supposed to identify with that. And uh, where is it moving from? And where is it going to? So that is the thing that you need to understand first. The process of borrowing a book from a library starts by a user removing the book from the shelf and taking it to the librarian. A process of borrowing a book from a library starts by the user removing the book from the shelf and taking it to the librarian enters the details of the book into the register. The book is then considered to be borrowed. After having the book for the two weeks, the user returns the book to the library when the librarian subsequently receives the book and return it to the shelf. So I think up to that point, uh, we need to do what you call brainstorming first. Uh, to come up with uh, the objects, to come up with the object. So I think maybe we can uh, brainstorm that. And uh, then after we brainstorm on that, maybe we can uh, start our question. So what I want us to do, uh, just a minute, just a minute. Uh, I wanted we have a, a presentation for this. Maybe we can... Uh,
Uh, I want to start polls. So this is poll one. And uh, we'll have responses. So I have sent to each and every one. We can have the second poll. So I think according to the question that I have already posted, maybe we can uh, try to come up with uh, different presentations. So what can you see? Uh, is there anything that you can see on that? So can we have the first one maybe coming up with some uh, uh, objects, maybe we can have one person maybe saying how many objects we have. So the first one, maybe you can use SMS or maybe you can communicate. Uh, how many objects do we have according to the question that I have already posted to you? How many objects can you see? Yes, Chris, please, can you read? And then you tell me how many objects can you see? Yes. Evans, how many how many questions can you see? Uh, how many actors can you see? Uh, how many objects can you see? So I think the question is clear. Okay, so Richard, I think I have seen you have written five. Maybe you can name them. So you can name them. Yes. I have six, so I have uh, Matthew six, uh, Richard six. It's good uh, 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 when you are naming them, uh, six, maybe you tell me how many, uh, which are these, so that we can uh, maybe try to understand each other. Yes, Michael, Michael Brand, how many can you see? You can switch on your mic and then maybe you communicate. So I start with the, I start with Richard. Richard, uh, which are these? Maybe anybody else with the, the same answer maybe can tell us which are these? How many objects do we have? In that scenario. I can see we are 12. We are 12 students. So I think it's good that we uh, maybe we can communicate. So we are 11, 11. Irene, Irene Omodi. 
How many objects can you see? Which are the which? So uh, I have Richard and Irene who are saying five. Eh? Uh, maybe you can uh, you can clarify on that whether it is correct or uh, if it is not correct, can you give us ours? Uh, you are sorry. Give us yours. Magara Kefa. What is your answer? Teddy, what is your answer? Yes, I'm waiting for those answers. So you can use your mic to communicate. It's your around. We communicate using your mic. Now, if you look at the question, I will read uh, where it is. The process of borrowing a book. The process of borrowing a book from the library starts by the user removing the book from the shelf and taking it to the librarian, enters the details of the book into the register. The book is then considered to be borrowed. After having the book for two weeks, the user returns the book to the library. When the librarian subsequently receives the book and returns it to the shelf. So the center of interest is the book. So if you look at that scenario, the center of interest is the book. Uh, we can say the center of interest is the book. But this book, we should be able to borrow it, but where are we borrowing it from? And who is borrowing that? So we have a user who is borrowing. Then the next one is what you call the librarian. We're supposed to borrow that. But where is this book borrowed? In the library. So if you can look at the interpretation of this uh, cause, uh, or this question that we have here, we are saying the process of borrowing a book from a library starts by the user removing the book from the shelf and taking it to the library, uh, librarian. So where is the book? Where is the book? Currently, the book is in the library. And because the book is in the library, so we can try to interpret this. So let us try to interpret this question. And maybe we can use our paint here. And uh, we want to use the first one. Maybe we can have the user. Uh, sorry for that. So remember, a user is a person. So we present this as a person. And uh, I want to call this eh, the first one. I call him the user. I call him the user or her the user. Then from here, we have another one whom we are calling the library. Remember the library is not a person. So we use two dots, then we highlight that. Then because this is a person, then we have another person whom we are calling a librarian. So we have a librarian. Then that. 
So automatically I have three objects. So one object is a person. Remember that, that a person is still an object. The next one that we have uh, is a librarian. The next one that we have uh, is a library. Remember, library is not a person. So we must move from a given point. So that's why we use a dot the right. We don't know whether the, this one, they must move to a given point. And these ones are supposed to move to a given point. So after we are given that scenario, we can understand that the process of, book, of borrowing a book from a library start by the user removing the book from the shelf. So we can have a message here. And uh, this message, we can use a focus of control. And this focus of control is supposed to move directly. It is supposed to move directly to a librarian. So this becomes the first one. You use two dots. We use two dots and we say uh, removing a book from shelf. From the shelf. So in this case, eh, we have already removed a book from the shelf. I, I think I can use, uh, maybe let's struggle with the, uh, the PowerPoint. Uh, we see whether it will work uh, when I bring that. Uh, we can use that. So we can uh, maybe have an insert. Uh, maybe we use this arrow. Maybe we can present this. And then we can have this. But this will take a lot of time. Uh, can you see the paint? When I'm using paint, can you see it clearly? Can you see it clearly? Okay, okay. If you can see it, instead of wasting time, uh, maybe we can use this eh, as a way of... Uh, uh, giving a presentation uh, on how we are supposed to follow up with that. So you return a book. So this is return. Return a book. Or remove a book, sorry. Remove. Remove a book from the shelf. So when you remove the book from the shelf, according to the scenario, you must follow each other. So from the start by the user removing the book from the shelf and taking it to the librarian. So we are moving. After you take this book from this, eh? I think this one, instead of using this the librarian, maybe we can use a book. A book is more pronounced. I think we can use a book as a more pronounced. So we call it a book. So we remove a book. So we are removing a book from the shelf. And that is what we have done. Then, when you remove it, we take it to the librarian. So immediately, we take it to the librarian. So this becomes number two. So number two, what you do, you take it to the librarian who enters details of the book into the register. So this one is number two, enters details of the book enters details of the book so it is done at the same time so immediately you move from there when the user now takes the book from the shelf so automatically this person now take it to the librarian and uh, when the book is now taken to the librarian, the librarian will enter the book to the, uh, the register. The book is then considered to be borrowed. So for this case, uh, we can say, after you do this, 
after you do this, the book is considered to be borrowed. So the moment you enter the details, so this is now, we're having another activity, and this activity, we call it number three, we call it number three, so borrowed. Borrowed. So the book is considered to be borrowed. So the moment the librarian automatically enters the book's details, eh, automatically he must or she must make sure that this book has already been borrowed. So you can use, still use eh, the dotted line. So moving from one focus of control to another focus of control. Then after that, uh, according to the question, the book is then considered to be borrowed. After having the book for two weeks, the user returned the book to the librarian. So after this person is having a book for two weeks, so we have another focus of control, but now he returns this book to the librarian. So returns the book to the librarian. So this becomes number four. Returns the book. Returns the book to the librarian. So you can still use these dotted lines to mark the boundary that is given. Still you can use this to mark the boundary. Then after that, we are saying the book is then considered to be borrowed after having the book for two weeks, the user returns the book to the library when the librarian subsequently receives the book and returns it to the shelf. So for this case, uh, we can say the user, uh, the librarian, the user returns the book to the librarian, but now after that, the library immediately after that, there is something that we are supposed to do. So return the book to the shelf. So number five, shelf. So you return it to the shelf. To the shelf. So for this case, eh, when a, a user returns the book to the librarian, so automatically update the database. Then when he or she updates the database, automatically he returns the book to the shelf. So uh, before I was using this as a library, but when you look at the library, there are many activities. You can have a library where you can have books. There is a library that allows you to play games. There is a library that allows you to have some presentation. But for this case, eh, we are having a library that is allowing you to make sure that now you can borrow a book. And because you can be able to, uh, it can be around to you to borrow a book. That's why we have now trying to separate that. And we have said, let's have a book instead of a library in general. So in this case, uh, there are five activities. There are five activities for now. I don't know whether we have completed. Receive the book and return it to the show. I think that is the last one. So if you look at this, uh, we are now supposed to end at this point. So you end at this point, and that's why we are saying we end with a dot line. Because now the activity that we had, it is adding at this point, but it is it was not adding at this. So if you end at this point, it means the lifespan or the lifeline of this process was adding at this time, so we did not have this activity. And because now we had this activity that we are having here, we can say our lifeline is adding at this point. So this becomes the end of our processing that we are supposed to have on this. So that's why we are saying eh, we are looking at time. And if you look at this, eh, we are saying time is given with the processing activities that we are supposed to have. And which are these activities that we are supposed to follow up in that uh, scenario when uh, uh, we are looking at uh, executions? On that so I think up to now uh, maybe uh, I would like maybe you tell us uh, you tell me whether you have uh, understood what you are doing uh, using that scenario 
because I'll be giving you that scenario and uh, you'll be looking at now uh, how we can be able to uh, create some presentation using the scenario. So hope you are understanding. If there is a question, maybe you can ask a question, then maybe we proceed. So I'm waiting for the questions. Yes, I can see you are typing. Okay, so I can see practice is needed for the same. Yes, you cannot understand with the first scenario. That's why I'm saying, first of all, when you understand the scenario, we need to come up with other scenarios which are very complicated. That's why I'm saying maybe from next week, on next week, we'll be able to flash back to all those activities that we have already done. Yes, I, I think Richard, for that, we need to have more questions. And next week, I will have other questions that I will bring to you on board so that we can do them. And we try to understand, uh, given that. Then I will give you uh, maybe the second cut will be a uh, cut two, which will be a system. Remember, you are doing your own system. So you'll be doing your system. So you'll present your system with these scenarios that we have, uh, with these diagrams that we have already covered. So yes, Matthew Koskei, uh, how many processes are in the question? So if you look at the question, uh, if I can use this question that is here, uh, uh, let me use this. Eh? Now, we are looking at uh, from one object to another. From one object to another. And when you look at from one object to another, that now brings to five activities. Because when you say the process of borrowing a book from a library starts by a user removing the book from the shelf and taking it to the librarian. Uh, maybe we can say who enters who enters the details of the book into the register so you can look at this point where a user is removing a book from the shelf when you remove the book from the shelf you take it to the librarian so the book is now taken to the librarian so automatically there is a process from the user to a book because you remove it now you hold that book then after holding that book it is now when the librarian now intervenes and registers that book. So those are two activities. The book is then considered to be borrowed. Who considers the book to be borrowed? He is the librarian. So that's why we are moving from the librarian to a book. So that book has already been borrowed. Nobody else can borrow that book. So that becomes activity three. After having the process, after having the book for two weeks, so now the book is in the custodian of the user. So after all it is in the custodian of the user, the user returns the book to the librarian. So we are not even wondering, uh, caring, whether this person has stayed with the book for three years or two weeks, uh, for, for two weeks or one week or one day. So what we know after staying with that book for two weeks, so it is a, a long term. So this now becomes another activity. The book, the user returns the book to the librarian or to the library. So. Where are you returning to the library? So the library is in the library. Uh, the librarian is in the, in the library. So that's why we are saying, instead of having an object we call library, because when you have an object called library, you will have a mixed up of uh, some other activities that are within the library, which are not even required here. So that's why we are saying, the book automatically is taken directly to the librarian, where this librarian uh, assures that these registers are at the end too. So this is now the fourth. Then subsequently receives the book and returns the book to the shelf. So when you, re when you return the book, the librarian receives the book. When he or she receives the book, automatically you take it to the shelf. That's why we are saying 
uh, the main activities that we are having here, they are five activities. The main activities that we are having here, they are five. I hope I have answered that question on how many processes are in the question. Or how many stages are we supposed to have on that uh, scenario? Okay, so I think it is clear now. Is there anybody other? Anybody else with another question? Anybody else with another question? Teddy, do we have any question? Teddy, do we have a question? Anybody else with another question? Okay, so after that, already we have already presented our use case, I'm sorry, our sequence diagram. The next one is now to look at now the collaboration diagram. And the collaboration diagram, we are looking at now how many activities are formed from the user to the book and from the book to the librarian and from the librarian to the book and from the librarian uh, to the user and from the user to the librarian so those are now the activities that are supposed to be formed in a way that we need to use what you call collaboration diagram and if you look at the collaboration diagram we are saying it is mostly uh, looking at the structure of relationships between these objects how is this object related with this how many activities are defined here that make sure that this activity can be able to relate with each other how will this book relate with the librarian how will the librarian relate with the book in that scenario so in this case uh, we can be able to understand uh, the relationship from a user to a book is only one that is returning a book then a relationship that we have from a book to the librarian those are two but now one is coming from the book and the other one is coming from the librarian so in this case when you're presenting uh this diagram we always present using this table so one we can call it So you can call it the first one, we can have it as a user. We can have a user. The next one we can have a librarian. And the next one we can have what you call a book. Because if you look at now the presentation of uh, a symbol that you're supposed to use, eh, we need to use a symbol like this. So that we can be able to relate this object from one object to another and then we pass those messages that has already been passed so that's why we say when you are drawing the collaboration diagram we must first of all create the sequence diagram so from the user to the librarian so from the user to the librarian so you can say this is the first activity and you make sure that sorry we don't use we use a straight line then when you use a straight line then we must show the direction and this is the direction so from this direction we can now say the first one is at point number four which is supposed to return book i think it is clear you can see that so this is point four so if I write four, so you write four, then you write full colon, then you write the message that is passed. But you can see this arrow is pointing to the librarian. Then you ask yourself, from the user to a book, how many activities do we have? So you can move from this and we move to that. So here from the user to a, to a book, so you can show this arrow so this is the first one so you write 
whatever is supposed to be written here. Then from a book to a librarian, uh, from a book to a librarian, from a book to a librarian, we have an activity. And for this activity, it moves at this point, and you say this is number two, which is supposed to have a message. Then from a librarian to a book, from a librarian to a book, you show this arrow, and you can give the message. Then the next one is from the librarian to a book, where we have two. So if I can present it somewhere here, because of space here, we need to have, uh, uh, the first one was from the librarian to a book. We have number three, borrowed. Then number five, which is supposed to have a message. So in this case, we will be able to present that with a given scenario. And that's why now we can say we are having a sequence diagram and we are having a collaboration diagram where if we want to interpret this, because it is like a model, we can say from a librarian to a book, we have two processes that are supposed to be undertaken. And one activity is supposed to move from the librarian to a book is what you call borrowed book. And the next one is returning to the shelf, which is supposed to be used as a collaboration diagram in that aspect. So in this case, eh, that's why we are saying uh, the model flows of control by time ordering emphasize on passage of uh, message over time. Model the flow of control by organization emphasize on uh, the structural relationship between objects. Now, how are these objects relating with each other? So you can see now the object one is relating with that. The, this one is still relating with this, but we can see the flow of relationships. And that's why we have this flow of these relationships. So you find that now it is much easier to interpret the concept that we have when we are using the collaboration diagram. Are we getting? Are we getting? So maybe we can have a brainstorming class. Maybe somebody can ask a question. Maybe somebody can ask a question on that. Okay, Evans, you have not understood. I'll repeat that. Okay, Richard, I can repeat. So uh, because of these two students, I can repeat that and I will still use the same diagram but uh, I want to draw it separately so that you can understand. I want to draw it separately so that you can understand. Allow me to use another paint and uh, I'll use them together. So if you look at these relations that we are supposed to have, uh, we need to ask ourselves, uh, how many, uh, how, uh, uh, how is this object relating with this? How is this object relating with this object? And uh, how is the next uh, object relating with another one? So that's why we need to ask ourselves, uh, which diagram can we use to define that relationship? And the best diagram that you're supposed to use to define this relationship is what you call the collaboration diagram. And uh, because we have three activities, just to draw uh, the same way uh, we have them here. So we draw the first one. Then we draw the second one. That one. Then if you look at this first one, we are having the first one as a user. The second one as a book.
so you can have that. The next one as librarian. So that is now the presentation that we have. Now we ask ourselves, from the user to a book, we have one relation. So we draw that relation. And that's why we are saying we use an arrow that points to the book and we give it as one return book or remove sorry remove the book so allow me to write in short form then if you look at the next one we are looking at now from the book to a library so from a book From a book to a library, we have number two enters the book. So you enter the details of the book. So that was the first one. So you present this there eh? from a book to a library. So you present that, which is number two. Uh, maybe we can call it details. Then from there, we have the number three. It is from library to a book. So we are moving from a library to a book. So we can present something like this. Where we are saying borrow. So this is number three. Borrow. So this is now number three. Then the next one is... Uh, from user to a librarian, from a user to a librarian. And this is now number four. So for this one, I can use it inside it because now we only have one. So number four, then you write the message. Then the next one is from the librarian to a book, from the librarian to a book. So this is number five. So number five, we are supposed to present it here. So that's why we are having two activities that are done by a librarian to a book, but others are one, one, one. So it becomes easier now to interpret that the user, from the user to a librarian, we only have one activity. From a user to a book, we only have one activity. From a book to a librarian, we have one activity. And from librarian to a book, we have two activities. But these activities are not done at the same time. So that's why we have presented with numbers. So the, the, the purpose of using a number is to present the duration or the time that these activities are supposed to be done. So in that, so that you can be able to understand on how these activities are supposed to follow up in the presentation. So this is now the use case, uh, sorry, the sequence diagram, and this becomes the collaboration diagram. So where we are looking at now the relationships of object. And these relationships of an object that we are having, uh, they are able now to create some uh, interpretation of different communications that we have. Is there any question now? Uh, Evans, have you understood? Richard, have you understood? Magara Kefa, do you have any question? Richard, I think you can maybe type so that I can see whether you have understood. Yes. Brian, can I see Evans typing? Grace, are we together? Are we in class? Okay, okay. So I can see Grace, Grace, Grace and Irene. Are we together? So if you remember what I said last week, eh? I said we will be dealing with two objects at a time. And uh, these are two objects. So if you can look at the diagrams that we are supposed to draw, uh, automatically we are remaining with five. And uh, because we are now, we have already covered the, the, the fourth one, 
that's why I'm saying maybe from next week on next week we can uh, go back to these scenarios again. Then you try to understand. Then from next week, but one now we can talk about two. Uh, then after we tackle two, then we move to the next one, and then after we move to the next one, we will be able now to look at other diagrams that we have. So in this case, uh, we have already talked about the interaction diagram, and uh, as the first dynamic model, and uh, this dynamic model has two, but we have another one that is called a state diagrams. So these state diagrams we will cover next time uh, after we understand about those diagrams that we have, uh, so that now we can be able to familiarize with these, uh, uh, what we are calling the interaction, diagram, uh, the interaction diagrams and what you call the behavioral diagram. So up to now, we have already covered the behavioral diagram. We have already covered on uh, the static diagram. Uh, in fact, there are five. Uh, we have already covered five diagrams. So we are remaining with four. That is the state diagram, deployment diagram, uh, maybe package diagram that we are supposed to have. Uh, if I'm, uh, okay, maybe the ones that I have here, deployment diagram, the component diagram, the state diagram, and the package diagram. Those are four diagrams that are remaining. But first of all, we will have another scenario I'll come with another scenario. We do it, we do that scenario. Then after that, maybe I can give you uh, a, a cut, maybe a muscle cut. We can call it a muscle cut so that we can see whether we are getting what we are doing. And uh, remember, this is, this is a unit that I said is very important when you are doing it. Remember, we will be using it in, uh, in your projects. So are we together up to that point? Yes, Brian, I have seen you have written a question mark. Brian, I think you have a question mark. Uh, I have not understood the, the, the meaning of the question mark as I interpret the next. Okay, according to Michael, uh, uh, why you uh, maybe? Oh, okay, okay. I have uh, seen the question. Understood. Eh? Soon you can, so you can have more than one message relating to two different yes it is it is okay you can have you can have even more than five eh? depending on the question that you have uh richard it's my hope he in orange tunaweza fanya nayo ile kuizi ikua umepeana very correct you can use that knowledge but now the problem is you cannot use the same symbols that we have eh? Uh, when you go to CBOS for activity diagram and use case, those are totally different. But the question uh, will have the same presentation. I, I don't know whether we have that question. Maybe we can see that question. Uh, let me see the question that we had. Uh, maybe edit the quiz eh, so that I can see that quiz. So the question was, to delete a book from a library database, the library must first check for its existence. If the book exists, the library management system then performs the delete operation. I think I can copy this. And then we move to a big blue button. Then I copy that to you. So to delete a book from a library database, the librarian must first check for it, its existence. If the book exists, the library management system then performs the delete operation and then re and returns a positive message. If the book is not found, an error message that reflects the failure is returned and the system ends the execution. It's very correct. You can use this. Eh? The first one is to identify the number of actors that we are having or the number of objects that we are having. So if you look at this, eh? To delete a book so you have a book you have a book then you have a database so library database so you have a book and we have a library database then we have a librarian then if you look at that i think those are the activities uh, those are the objects that we have uh can you see those activities one is the book, uh, object, sorry. One of the objects is the book. 
The next one is the library database, which now forms what you call the library management system. Then the next one is now the librarian. So if you look at that question, maybe we can uh, look at that question in another way of interpretation. And uh, we can say we are having a book. So we can have a book. So we use, so remember to use a full colon eh? every time we are using it. Then the next one that we are having is uh, the database. Allow me to use a DB. I know you know what is a DB. Uh, that is a database, library database. Then the next one, we are having a librarian. So we have a librarian. So we have a librarian. Then from this library, we are saying to delete a book from a library database. So we can have some activities here. So from this point, we can say to delete a book from a library database, the librarian must first check for its existence. So we can have here, uh, so we can look at now here, uh, uh, we know we need to know on how we can change this. I want to change this eh, and the book should be in front uh, at the center. So let me have a book at the center. Then here we have a DB. Here we have a book. Then here we can have a librarian. So from the first thing that you're supposed to do, the librarian who is here, remember to include the name. So, So first of all, we are having that. So this is the first thing that you are supposed to do. So number one, check book. Check book. To delete a book from a library database, the library must first check for its existence. If the book exists, the library management system performs the delete. So if you look at this, eh? if the book is in the library, who does that? So this system performs that. So number two, delete. Delete. The, uh, then performs the delete operation and return a positive message. Why are you returning a positive message? Now this is uh, about the system, so we are hindering some application that is inside uh, the system. So we, uh, have, we have already seen that we have already deleted the book. If the book is not found, uh, an error message that reflect failure is returned. So in this case, uh, we have two messages. And these messages are as a result of deletion. So for our when you're using a sequence diagram, automatically there are other activities that are hidden. So if you if you fail to delete automatically, you will not delete that message. So that's why we are assuming that, that we have already deleted or if you are not deleting that book, we have already given out the presentation of our message. Another message that Frank is done, and the system ends the execution. So if you look at this, eh, uh, those are the only activities that you can have within this question. A very simple one in terms of interpretation. Where we can still expound this question and we say, to delete a book from the, the library must check the existence of which we have already checked, if the book exists. So if the book exists, the library management system. So for this case, eh, 
uh, if it exists, what are we supposed to do? Maybe we can add, eh? if the book exists, we can return some messages directly to the librarian. And you say, maybe number two, if you use that book exists. If you want to expound, book exists. So if it exists, that is when the database will always have to, uh, to return. So in this case, uh, who is returning whether the book has already been uh, done that? So for this case, we have some error because this one is supposed to move from this point. So the book return a message to the librarian. So the book return a message to the librarian, which is now supposed to be number two, maybe exist. or it is not existing. So if it exists, that is the time that this system will now do what you call deletion. So that is why we move directly. From this point, you do some deletion. So in this case, eh, deletion now becomes number three. So we do away with this. We do away with this. If you want to expand with our own interpretation. So we delete. If it does not delete, that is the time this one is now adding. But because the arrow has already added at this point, eh? because the arrow has already added at this point, that's why we move our arrow and we add. So our life, our lifeline, eh? our lifeline ends at this point. So in this case, eh? we have already introduced exist. So we can now bring out. Uh, that the system is now comparing whether it exists or not. Because in a sequence diagram, we don't use eh, decisions. That's why we are hindering some other activities and we are only giving out the checkbook and the deletion. Because in our case, eh, we don't have decision when you come to uh, the sequence diagram. Yes, Brian, I can see you are typing. Which one? Uh, is the first process from the library supposed to go to the book? Yes, it is supposed to go to the book because we are checking, yeah? Because the librarian has a system to check whether this book now, we are checking the book. Because when you move this from uh, this, eh, you move to this, eh, we are now not checking the book, we are checking the system. If you move from the, the librarian to the database, you are checking the system. But if you move from the librarian to a book, we are checking the book according to this. The librarian must first check for the existence. So when you are checking it from, uh, when you are checking the existence of this book, so the first thing that you are supposed to note, we are checking the existence, but now the system allows you to do that. So that is why still you can be able to maybe expand this and you say uh, you can move this eh? uh, if you want to expand this, but it is not allowed because it is not provided. If you want to expand that, and mostly this one, you can allow it when you're using your project. Well, we can say uh, this one is checked. Checked. And this arrow is supposed to move to to this. So it is supposed to move to the database. So when it is moving to, and it says checked, that's why we are saying exist or not exist. And if it exists or not exists, then the database should delete if it doesn't exist, if it exists. So you can maybe expound that, but it is not allowed eh, if you have not been given that presentation at that point. So you only do that. You only do that if it has already been presented. But in our own scenario, it was not presented. That's why we were saying uh, we were moving away from uh, the internal working of the system. We are only giving out the physical presentation of the system that we have. Is that clear, Brian? Any other question that we are having? So can we, can we move to the quiz? Eh? Maybe I, I want you to do that quiz eh? that we were doing last time. 
please uh, i want you to do within uh, 338 eh? uh to four uh, to 430 so i'm giving you only one hour please to do that is that okay Is that okay? We do the quiz that you are supposed to do last time. If you did, eh, uh, if you did, I'll post a challenge question that we can be challenging each other uh, in our own, in our today class. Then, if you do not do that quiz, eh, please, can you go and do it so that now we can proceed together? Because I will close it. Yes, so I think we can move to that point, uh, to that session, so that we can do uh, that quiz. So please allow me to move to that, so that we can move and do some quiz on that. And uh, remember, uh, there are those people who did not do my cat one. And uh, I don't know why they did not do that cat one. And remember, I had posted it on Friday, and only two students did. So I don't have marks for those people who did not do that cut. I don't know how you will communicate to me so that you can do that cut. I don't know. Uh, please make sure that you arrange the day that you can do that cut and you sit for it. Failure to that, maybe you will have an issue when you are sitting for the end term exam because you will not sit for that exam if you have not done cut one and cut two. So I think we can move to that point.